talked before about the key measurements reach and drop so just a quick reminder reach is that distance horizontally from the saddle forward to the handlebars and drop is that vertical distance from the saddle down to the handlebars in most cases now one of the key components that contributes to that overall measurement is the stem now stems come in lots of different shapes and sizes so I've got a couple here this is a 100 mil stem with seven degrees this is a 110 mil stem and here is a 120 mil stem. So you can see just the, the difference that they will make on your overall reach measurements. Now, the angles also make quite a big difference. So in clinic, when I'm doing some bike fitting, I will use something like this called a stem sizer. And this will allow me to try lots of different combinations of length, angulation, and height. What's the reason? To try to find the most efficient, most comfortable position for the rider so that they can actually get the best performance out and have good sustained posture on the bike. So I'm going to do a couple of videos looking at different setups and just showing how they affect the riding position. So hopefully that might help you to identify and pick out whether you're having any issues that may well be coming from the front end. So stay tuned and keep a lookout for the video. Okay, so I'm set up here in my regular setup, 110 mil stem, minus seven degrees. And what I'm going to go through in some of these videos is just some quick changes just to show you what happens with body position, uh, weight distribution and so forth. So as you can see at the moment, I can change pretty comfortably between my hand positions, which means there's not too much pressure on my hands. My elbows are nice and soft and relaxed, which means it's unlikely I'm going to get too much pressure around my head, neck and shoulders. So the first thing I'm going to do is start to go into a longer stem position. So here I am now. I've just kept the same stem angulation, but I've taken it out to 130. So I've increased by 20 mil in length. And straight away what you'll see is that I'm just bringing my weight slightly further forward and my arms are straightened out a little bit. I can still reach the hood position. I can still change between the hoods and the drops but you can see there's just a little bit more weight as soon as i lift my hand away i'm quite keen to get that second hand back on so you can see it's brought weight forward it's slightly reduced my hip and my lower back angle my elbows have extended a little bit further yes it's within my window of capacity to reach it but you can see i'm just struggling a little bit more to get that hand position Okay, so now I've shortened things substantially. So from my initial starting position of 110 mil, I've now come in 90 mil. So that's 20 millimeters shorter. You can see my elbows have now dropped right down, almost to the point where my elbows and knees are almost crossing over here. The position is okay. It's shifted my weight. I can feel my pelvis has tilted and rotated back a little bit towards my sit bones. I can sit upright feel pretty comfortable and shift my weight pretty nice and lightly and easily but what I do feel is that I'm very far on top of my bars so my chest is almost on top of my handlebars and if I go to come out of my saddle I'll feel like I'll be right over the top of my bars here very quickly and again that has a dramatic effect on handling and control of the bike I'm going to shorten up one more time just to show you an exaggerated version of that effect okay so here I am now riding a 70 mil stem which is often something I'll see. Someone may be on a bike that they've decided they cannot replace for whatever reason, may, might be down to cost, and they just need to make their bike fit because they've got a short stem. So that can sometimes be an okay uh, short-term solution, um, but there is an implication associated with it in terms of changing your handling. The shorter the stem is, it will make the handling a little bit sharper and a bit more snappy, and that might well be uh, a little bit more uncomfortable. So. Back to the position that we get. I'm down on this 70mm stem. My elbows are now really dropped in because I'm trying to find a way to fit myself onto this shorter position that I'm slightly less comfortable with and less used to as well. There is always an adaptation. And get down to the positions here. But I feel that things are very much coming underneath me now. The bar, the bar is right underneath my chest. My elbows and knees are very crossed over. And if I go to get out of the saddle, I'm now starting to hit my knee off the bars and that's not comfortable efficient or useful at all so it's rotating my pelvis backwards and upwards it's cramped me right in I'm not able to breathe as easily and so while the pressure on my hands might be quite light I can lift my hands away it's definitely not going to be efficient and not going to allow me to work through the multiple riding positions there again quite substantial elbow and knee crossover that's just not comfortable so that just gives you a little emphasis on the differences that a stem length can make. So I'm back riding at my regular position, 110mm stem, minus 7 degrees. 
I'm going to just show you the effect of one of the simple changes that we'll see quite often, which is where, if possible, uh, flipping over the stem. Not all stems can be flipped upwards and downwards, some are not safe to do so, but most uh, will be. So I just want to show you what that would look like. So by changing the angle from minus 7 to plus 7, I've probably gained about in the region of 15 to 20 mil. It depends on the length of your overall stem for how much that angle is going to change. But probably in the region of about 15 to 20 mil in terms of height. So if my issue is potentially neck ache, lower back issues, feeling my body weight being pushed forward too much, a change in height may well be a short term solution to just alleviate that tension and shift that weight back a little bit. And already you can see I can just sit up more easily and still reach the bars compared to where I was before. It does that necessarily mean that this is where I need to be? Well, this is what you've got to explore during bike fit. So if you're having particular pain or problems in your neck, or your lower back, or struggling to reach down to the drops, then it might be an idea to flip your stem. Of course, in my experience, making one change like that will often make changes elsewhere. Okay, so just for a bit of fun here, I've now dropped this stem down to a virtual minus 30. Now in practice, what we'd probably do to achieve a lowering of this extent would be just to take some spacers out of the stack underneath the stem. But for demonstration purposes, I'm just showing you just how much a sizing stem can allow us in terms of changing the position to give us more information about what works. So I'm gonna get right down to this position and this is feeling super low for me. You can see it's bringing my chest really far forward and down, it's bringing my weight forward. Again, can I reach the position? Yeah. Can I reach the different uh, areas of my bars and change position? Yes. Is it harder or easier than my previous position? Substantially harder. It's also changed quite an amount, the area of my pelvis that's interacting with the saddle. It's an area I'm not used to, so I'm rolled forward on the pelvis much further. I'm definitely not as comfortable there. And so in all likelihood, despite the fact that I can get into this position and ride it, if I go out for a couple of hours, I'll find that I'm probably gonna be stiff and sore in the neck, a lot more pressure in the hands, pressure through the saddle, a little bit uncomfortable there. So all of these sort of things we need to be aware of is that just because we can get a position doesn't mean it's gonna be the best position for a rider to maintain and get optimal performance.